Okay, David, talking about promises. Can you promise me not to look at my notes before you preach the young worshipers' message? Because now I don't have anything to say again. <laughs> it's amazing how the Holy Spirit works because there is always, certainly, we don't talk much about the specifics of the message, but in the end, it seems like we prepare everything, and I think it's just the Holy Spirit helping us to hear uh, the message. So, grace to you and peace from Abba, Father, Mother, and Creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our sibling, our Savior, our friend. And we said, Amen. Really, I don't know what to say now. Well, the first thing that I would like to ask you is, uh, in this Reformation Sunday, if you have a chance to look at the booklet or in your bulletin, it doesn't have page numbers, I believe. Oh, yeah, it has page numbers. But if you look on page six, I believe it's page five, five of your bulletin, right after the hymn of the day, you have the picture, the picture that is here on, top, on, on the front page of your, of your uh, booklet. But I invite you just to take a moment and to look at Rooted in Community and to look at that picture and to reflect on the things that we have been talking about for the past four weeks. Just take a moment and think, what has crossed your mind? Where are some realizations through this journey? What is the Spirit telling you? And what does, what, what does it mean to be a congregation that is rooted in community. Anyone who would like to say one or two words, what does it mean? What does this tell you? What comes to your mind when you hear rooted in community. We're in this together. Say one more. They are that interconnectedness of all people, right? The history of connections of the Ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church and Schools in this community and how the Spirit has been working through the many people who have been here and the people who are here now and the people who will be part of this congregation, people who we do not know, but I believe the people that God already got, has in God's heart to join this community to continue to advance the reign of God in this place. Reformation, I think, that was about a call for the church to be rooted in the community. At some point, the church started losing the to be in touch with the reality of the world and the lives of people. And the church started to be somewhere out there where only those who were the elite and those on the power and those on the knowledge were the church. Reformation was a call of the Spirit to bring back the church to this place to be rooted in the community. One of the things that Martin Luther did in order to connect with the community was what? Do you remember with the scripture that nobody could read? He translated the scripture in the vernacular so that people would be able to listen to their message in their language and to let the Spirit work through those words and through those stories to discover together how the church is rooted in the community. And as it was said earlier, that we are all in this together and that we are connected as the body of Christ. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Abide. In my love, says the Lord Jesus Christ. As David said, we return to where we started. The ground where life germinates, but also where life ends. Last Sunday I said a tree is in, in the end, a seed that leaves out the scattered 
the, the sacred purpose for which it was created, to live up to the full potential that was in it. And that full potential is, as David said, David, to bring much fruit. We talk about the branches and the structure, the stability, the, 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 the way that trees reproduce themselves, but also the way that trees connect with the environment in which they are. Through the leaves, through the branches, the leaves and the fruits can be and bring life, shelter, shade. Life for the tree when the leaves exchange the CO2 to exchange it for oxygen and the moisture in the air and to provide the strength that the, leaf need, that the tree needs so that leaves and fruits can also grow. But not only grow, that, tree, that leaves and fruits will also die knowing that more will come back. You and I are called to be the extensions of God's love and justice, generosity and forgiveness. Not to create our own justice, but to allow the justice of God in God's generosity and love to flow through us as trees. How? Well, Jesus says, one way that you can do it is by abiding in me, abiding in my love. And the word abide in the Greek, that, re, that means to remain, to endure, to go along with, to stay. It's a reminder of the profound, profound and intimate connection of God with each one of us. But also a reminder of the gift of faith that has been given to us and the intersection with our daily life. Daily life that has to do with the challenges that we face every day, with the opportunities that we f face every day, with the encounters that we have every day with people of God that reminds us who we are and also bring blessing to us. The intersection of faith and life that tells us about the, the, the resources that God has placed in our hands for us to release them and to bring life into the community including our financial well-being and the fulfillment in our lives so that you and I may experience complete joy when we receive, but also when we release with open hands and with open hearts. You remember that every Sunday we remind ourselves as congregation that we are extensions of Jesus' welcome healing and transformation. It is not our own effort. It is not only about us or just a desire. It is because that's what, who we are and for what we have been created, to be extension of God's grace. Branches take the fruits beyond the tree. Trees do not keep the fruit and the leaves to themselves. Branches extend and take the fruit far away from the tree so that what happens when the tree, when the, when the fruits fall from the branches of the tree? What happened? They grow a new tree. See what happens. Sometimes we believe that the gifts that, that God has given us are ours and we keep them to ourselves and we keep them and hold them only for ourselves and we forget that we need to extend it and, only, and that's the only way for the gift to the fruit to produce more. Trees with their branches extend the arms so that the fruit can create more community more trees around them. And only when they are in community, they are able to work together to support one another. The roots that you see here in this booklet or on your, on your bulletin is what tells me about what it means to be rooted in community, interconnected and interdependent. Trees, big, trees and the roots in the trees bring stability to the ground. That's what happens when we deforestate, right, the mountains. When trees die and the roots die, they are not able to hold the ground together anymore. And when the storms come, everything is washed away. 
St. Paul says, you must give according to what you have, you have inwardly decided, not sadly, not reluctantly, but good, but God loves a giver who gives cheerfully. In the book, I, I was reading a book called Free of Charge by Miroslav Wolf, Wolf, and he says this, which is interesting. Faith is an expression of the fact that we exist so that the infinite God can dwell in us and work through us for the well-being of the whole creation. For the well-being of the whole creation. Leaves fall from the tree and they are blown away by the wind. Fruits fall to the ground and they decompose. And they remind us that it requires humbleness for us to release what God has given us or put in our hands in order to bring life. It requires humbleness, letting go of fear and trusting that others will come even when we die to continue the work that God has been doing. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. And to me, that is part of the Reformation. I am a bad gardener, and you know that I kill plants even before I touch them. When I see people working in the garden and they start pulling the branches, I just feel like, oh my goodness, how can you do that? You will kill the plant. Yeah, they look pretty. But I, just, I realize that the pruning is necessary. And it's done with love. Because we want that plan to continue to grow. To ensure the sustainability of the plant and the fruitfulness of the plant. Yes, there is pain. Yes, there is suffering. But in the end, we believe that if we abide in the love of God, we are not in this journey together. What are the things that we pray for, for God to prune from our lives to be able to see the love and the abiding presence in each one of us, to be the trees and the branches and the fruits that bring life to this community? Some fruits may be small. This is a real apple, just very tiny. Some others are bigger and juicy and tasty. Some leaves are very small. Some leaves are very big. These are the leaves that I collected as I got to walk every day and as we were reflecting on trees and leaves and fruits, this reminded me of how we are called to release and to let go. Leaves get dry. Fruit may be decomposed on the ground. Some are small, some are big. Doesn't matter. In the end, every fruit and every leaf has a purpose in a cycle that reminds us of our daily, of our daily dead and our daily new life. Again, Miroslav Wolf says, to give to God is to take from God's right hand and put that very thing back into God's left hand. And when this tells me is that everything that we have and everything that we are, we receive it by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Nothing is ours. We are the channels of God's grace and mercy.
We have been walking this journey together for four weeks, my dear siblings in Christ. We have been walking together to remember that we are interconnected, interrelated, and interdependent. That this community is not built around individual accomplishments, choices, or rights. This community called Church, Trinity Lutheran Church and Schools, is not my enterprise. It is not to build something that I like and I come because it's what I want. And if something changes, then I won't come anymore. This church is the orchard of God that has been called to bring fruit and to be rooted in this community to be an agent of transformation and healing. A people who are not fearful anymore because we are free in the love of, and grace of God. A people who is willing to extend the arms, to open hands, and to release and let go everything that prevents us from being who we were called to be. We have promised to be that, and God has promised to be with us. And we have committed also to be that and to help each other to live out and to live up to that promise. Rooted in community is to live intentionally a generous life naturally. So what fruits are we bringing today? Around you in the pews, you will find these little hearts that I invite you to find and to take them with you. As we are coming to the conclusion of these four weeks, as you can see the completion of the tree out in the Arctic, that reminds us of all the ministries that, as John said, have been brought through the years of life and ministry of this congregation. We remember that you and I now are the seeds that are scattered. And as Vian told me, these are the fingerprints of God in each one of us that you and I are the fruits and the seed, the tree and the orchard, that you and I are called to extend our arms and to continue to bring the seeds of God's grace, mercy, reconciliation, beauty, and joy that only the Spirit can bring. That yes, there will be days of drought, there will be days of flooding, there will be days of wind, there will be days when things go, go well, but in the end, we are rooted and abiding in the love of Jesus to be the seeds and the fruits that bring the message of God to this place. In the past few weeks, you have received, you have received your commitment cards. And in thinking of how to be leaves and seeds, as I said in my letter that I sent you, I had to also to remember the commitment that I made when I joined this ministry. And I had to decide if I want to be an instrument or I want to be an obstacle to, for, the, for the ministry of God in this place. It took me a while to fill out my card it's going to bring some changes in my family and how we are going to commit to the church. Yes, totally, absolutely. I will need to reprioritize my life and how the resources that God has placed in my hand can be taken from the right hand of God, right to place them in the left hand of God so that God can continue spreading the seeds. Leaves <laughs> are gone and fall on us. I don't throw the apple because that will be hard, but <laughs> I invite you now to take your cards, if you brought your cards. If you are participating online, I invite you that maybe you can do it online. Or if you have your phones and, and it's easy for you to do it on your phone, let's just take a moment and hold our cards 
and give thanks to God for the blessing that God has given us, that no matter how small our fruits, our leaves may be, in the end, they have a purpose. And that purpose is visible, palpable, and a reason to celebrate as the church continues to reform and to grow and to reflect God's love and mercy through his ministry. You also receive a, an envelope. You can place your car inside the envelope. And in prayer, ask God to help us to abide in the love of Jesus and in this promise that we make to also ask for the courage to hold each other accountable to the promise that we are making. There will be in a moment, we will be singing together the hymn of the day. And during the hymn of the day, we are going to place our commitment cards in this basket. If you are in your play in your, uh, on your seat and you would like for someone to help you, just raise your envelope or your card and the, a host, a guiding host will take your card and bring it here to the basket. But I invite you that as we listen to the lyrics of the, the hymn, as we sing maybe in our hearts, that we pray that this commitment is also an opportunity to make our joy complete in the love and in the mercy of God. Let's pray and sing.